Hey there! So today we have another Battle Beers, and this is between two Gozas, and this is between Drew Fontaine and Cantillon, two of the most sought after uh, Lambic producers uh, in the world. And so these are actually two relevant vintages. Uh, this one is one uh, bottling 2015, and actually says on the label over here. They've uh, now updated to a different kind of label and design. If you see Drew Fontaine, and then the Cantillon is actually this one's actually specifically from Japan. Um, my friend Kenny bought it back from back for me, but uh, obviously <laughs> brewed in, uh, Brussels, in uh, Belgium, but this is a 2015 vintage, and then you actually have to find it on the cork, and I'll show you guys that in a second. I'll save this cap, we'll see. All right, so yeah, I mean, Cantillon, I know for a while, uh, people that got into beer way before me said that this stuff was uh, relatively accessible for some people and actually uh, pretty easy to find. Drew Fontaine for me was the uh, brewery that was easier to find and actually the cork actually uh, didn't last too long. It's breaking apart on me. Let's see how that would do. Okay. We don't get, have any cork in the beer. All right. Good. Worked out okay. Drew Fontaine is the brewery that actually was easier to find for me earlier on. I imagine both are just almost impossible to find these days on the shelves, but uh, we do get shipments here and there in New York. And then I guess for you guys locally, you guys can tell me how that goes. But anyway, what is this? This is uh, a traditional Goza. Uh, Goza is a combination of one, two, and three year old aged, spontaneously fermented beer. This is a very, very old traditional way of making beer and one of the uni most unique styles out there. And now we have American Sour Breweries, uh, Wild Breweries, trying to uh, imitate this kind of spontaneous style of brewing. Uh, very rustic, very different style of brewing. Again, inoculated with the air war that is around in the specific um, air in the Peyote Line and the Sin Valley of these specific uh, breweries. So very interesting. And by the way, while I am doing a side by side, from what I understand, it's really more important to think about these beers about their vintages because they develop with time, and each vintage is also going to be quite different. So even though these these breweries might have specific uh, idiosyncrasies within them, you won't follow that throughout. So like 2016, one might be different than the, let's say these two beers. 2016, they'll be different, and 2017, they'll be different. So um, this is just a flash of the picture of what this is now. 2015 vintage, and I'm just comparing them. So let's dig into, I guess, uh, the Cantillon first. Yeah, that's funky. It has a little bit of fruit character. It has almost a little bit of like uh, stone fruit um, and like peachiness, like uh, slightly tart apricot going on. It also has that signature. I call it toasted sesame. I've heard people call it um, peanut skin. Signature, signature uh, nose. Quite sweet and flowery. Smells awesome. Cheers. A little bit of acidity in there. Mm -hmm. So um, it's pretty musty in there. Uh, it has a little bit of this kind of like dirty water kind of thing going on. The city is uh, at a medium place. It's actually decently soft. A lot of perfume, flowers dancing around in this one. It's also a little bit of hop quality, I feel. As you wait more, it plays around with a little bit of acetic, like not too much, but just a little bit of acetic, showing a little bit of that vinegary tartness. Also with the pretty lactic thing going on. Decently rounded. But there's like a musty thing on the back end. It, it, it's like attic and just like, and dust and dirt kind of thing going on. But then there's, it, it's also sprinkled on, sprinkled on with pretty flowers too. Wonderfully delicious, wonderfully complex. Wonderful acidity. That's just a delicious drinking goza. Yeah, wow, awesome. Let's think of the Cantillon. It seems like there's more carbonation on this one. Such a different nose. That is absolutely insane. Whereas this one, I just like immediately think goza. This one, that's so weird. This one is where you get, I know some, uh, some, uh, one of the tasting notes is horse blanket for some people. Um, it's one that's made fun of. It's one of the traditional tasting notes that people think of when they think of uh, uh, beers like this and especially uh, some strange of Brett. But if you don't want to think about that, then, you know, I think dirty socks. I think of um, almost blue cheese, but it's ha it has a dirty sock, kind of like smelly feet kind of thing going on, quite obviously. Almost leaning towards like rotten food. Yep, stinky. A little bit of city in there. 
Such a different nose. Wow. Cheers. It, it's, it's so dirty compared to this one where, it, where this one was pretty, had things going on. First off, I like the carbonation on this one. It had a little bit of head. It has a little, little creaminess to it. Such a different beer. Wow. The acidity is a little bit more restrained. Um, it, it, it for sure shines of lactic up front, more like a Berliner, uh, if you're familiar with that, than really the vinegary kind of thing that you get on the back end. Very different acidity balance. I like its creaminess. It's actually a little bit more level. That makes any sense. This one had little spikes of uh, flavor going on. This one has that dirtiness on the back end, a little bit of that kind of dirty water thing, a little bit of that funk on the back end. It also has that dusty thing on the back end as well. I imagine that what, what that dirty thing is that I'm tasting is possibly that aged hop character. So there's a little bit of bounce of bitterness. These beers do have uh, aged hops added to them. As a bit more, I get more of like crab apple, tart apple kind of thing, but like sort of like not like really delicious apples, just like really tart, acidic kind of apple thing going on. Almost like raw dates coming in. Um, yeah, it's just got a little bit of a green kind of uh, sourness to it. it uh, oh, that's where it is. Um, uh, I think of something like a, a little bit like lime and also what's that flavor I'm looking for? You also taste the soft water profile in the middle and glides away. Not as funky as the nose. And then as for this one, oh, that's prettier, I think. I like the uh, complexity of acidity on this one. This one also is a lot more flowery. And it just seems like it has more, um, even though this smells so dirty on the nose, this one has that beautiful balance of a pretty floral thing with that kind of dirty thing on the back end, uh, that dusty attic thing. This one is just a little bit more tight. It just doesn't uh, bounce around the flavors as much. Mm -hmm. Yep. And as I wait more, I, I, see, I feel like I taste that kind of like sesame, uh, toasted sesame thing that I find very signature in um, Goza. But on the nose, it's mostly lost. It's just so stinky. It's, it smells like feet. Or is this one prettier on the nose? That's one I is what I generally associate with Goza. Um, I think a lot of people are fanboys of either which one. Some people actually do prefer Dufontaine, which can be a little bit more easier to access than Cantillon. But with the 20, uh, 2015 vintages right now, um, I personally prefer the Cantillon. Um, I, I wouldn't blame anybody for choosing one or the other, but it's so surprising how different these beers are, um, even though they're within the same style. But they're just uh, you know different vintages. They age differently. The vintages themselves change year to year. So 2016 probably tastes different, and a, and a new one tastes different, and this is going to taste different from everything. So again, this is a quick snap shot of what the these 2015 vintages are tasting four years in, and that's all that it can really say. And then there's bottle uh, variation as well, because bottles will age out differently. Again, there's there's uh, development of age uh, within these bottles, and um, that's all I can say within these two specific bottles with two specific vintages. As a way more, I'm liking the acidity. It, it shows a little bit more. Yep. But this one just like noticeably more sour and a little bit more acidic. And I think that plays well into the beer and has just some more complexity going on. And I really like that toasted sesame thing that's uh, dancing around. So uh, here, Cantillon wins today, but then uh, maybe another day, Dufontaine wins. Uh, post the comments a little about what your favorite Lambic producer is, goes a producer. Um, hopefully I'll bring some more videos. I could do Bone, Tilken, uh, maybe Cuvée Rene, some of the other ones that are uh, accessible out there. Until next time, guys, cheers. Let me know what you think. Later.